So our webinar today is on MFL SOS, keeping up motivation over the summer term. So we'll be looking at a number of different uh, ways in which you can uh, yeah, motivate your students and just kind of keep up staff and, and student morale during this time, which can be a challenging uh, term for both primary and secondary. So please do let us know whether you're primary or secondary when you're teaching. And uh, I'll be talking today with my colleague Elaine. Those of you who've been joining the MFL SOS series so far will know our faces both very, very well. Um, but uh, Elaine and I are both experienced uh, former teachers of MFL and uh, various other things as well. You can see our bios. So we are really looking forward to sharing with you loads and loads of tips that we have. So we'll get started pretty quickly now. Um, and hopefully as people, uh, more people join in. I'll be able to follow along. I'd also like to let you know that this webinar is being recorded. Um, so if you want to look at it later, and um, because it's going to be packed full of so many practical ideas that you can use, hopefully, um, so then you can watch it back on the LanguageNet website, um, hopefully in the next few days. And also, if you've got any colleagues who couldn't make it today, you can then send that to them. So yeah, I've just seen a question as well, someone asking whether a session will be recorded. Hopefully that has answered your question. Yes, it will be. So, um, why have we looked at this this particular topic? So um, there are a number of challenges. Uh, if you're in secondary, um, for lots of people, this is the difficult um, term when students in year nine or the equivalent um, haven't chosen your subject or your language, whatever, or maybe not a language at all, and they give up at this point. There's no point not taking this next year anyway. So you can start to get some um, challenging behavior from some students. Um, also, perhaps by the, the exam year students, they can be a bit disillusioned because their exams are cancelled. Um, obviously, there are still the teacher assessed grades and the um, centre assessed grades to come, but some students maybe find that a bit more hard to take seriously. Um, and also, they're just really fed up. We're all fed up. We're fed up of being stuck at home, fed up of a pandemic. So you can get some challenging behaviour from um, the exam year students are even more so than in a normal year. It's not just the, um, the the normal challenges. Plus, also everybody's a bit fed up by school trips. Normally, this they, they might be happening exchanges and so on. They've been cancelled, perhaps for a second year. Um, yeah, and everybody's just really fed up. Um, and then you have social distancing and possibly still some remote teaching on top of that as well, depending on where you are. So loads and loads of challenges in the face of all that. How do we keep up staff and student morale? But also we want to keep meaningful learning happening. So it's not just all about, hey, let's play games and everyone will be fine for this term. We also want to make sure they are learning. So we've got lots of ideas. We'll be looking at projects you can do, different cultural um, things you can do, perhaps where you might be focusing on, yeah, on culture as opposed to just purely language. Not that you focus on just language, but yet yeah, really more of a focus on culture, um, how you might use technology, how you might use rewards and how you might use um, particular techniques, adjusting the way you teach possibly for this term. And this could be these could be things you could use later on in you know, next year and other parts of the year as well but we feel are really in our experience really useful for this time of year and elaine and i are going to be uh, chopping and changing and both giving um tips and pretty much all of these are tried and tested they are things that we did as teachers ourselves so hopefully you'll find them really useful so um looking at projects um one thing which uh, was this was one of my favorite things we did every year was the eurovision song contest um, at one of my schools I worked at. Um, so we did this in year seven, um, but you could do it with other year groups as well. And each class would teach a song, or they would learn a song together, um, perhaps a little dance routine to go with it. And they would they would film it. And then the other, the rest of the year group would watch all the films and uh, they would then you know, vote on it and, and, and so on. And it was, it was really, really great. It was so motivating. So with my class, what I used to do is um, the sort of last, 20 minutes of the lesson perhaps for you know for a couple of weeks would be working on the song so it was a real incentive right we're going to get through the other things that i want to cover in this lesson and then obviously if we've got them the more time the quicker we get through that because you know, related to your behavior the longer we've got to spend on the eurovision song contest which they really really wanted to do you can see a picture here um, this is from uh, one of my German class. We did uh, a song called Oberammergau, which is um, a sort of a Schlager hit, a, um, a tongue twister. 
and um, it was they really loved it. They they dressed up. They made they managed to make kind of dandles with their food tech aprons, and they made little hats. And uh, they used bandages, I think it was. It was very, very low budget to make uh, kind of as if they were having Lederhosen. Um, we, they, they learned to dance routine and they absolutely loved it. It was one of my favourite projects. So this is really, really nice. You can do lots of other cross-curricular cross projects. So we've got loads of ideas here. Food tech, um, perhaps you could work with a colleague in food tech to look at um, using a recipe in another language, or even if it's a recipe in English, if it's in the colleague's lesson, um, then it could be making food um, from another culture, making tapas, for example. Um, and then you could do a bit of a tasting. That can be really nice. Um, art is something we've done really successfully in the past. Um, so I used to do um, in the so in the last school I worked at, we we used to do a European week of languages actually in the summer. It was a, something that we just made up ourselves. Um, I know there was the, is the European Day of Languages in uh, the sort of the autumn term. But we did a whole week of languages where we sort of took over the whole school and we would do I would do an art treasure hunt. So I would go around and find different pieces of artwork around the school. Um, and then I wrote descriptions in the language in the target language and then students had to go off and find them based on those descriptions. That's a really nice way of revising um, the kind of the different adjectives and so on. And actually as a model for photo description, because you can then use that as a basis for that. They really enjoyed that. Um, Obviously, that depends on it being possible for students to, to leave the classroom. It depends on your social distancing rules where you are, um, but that can be really nice. And also with art, um, we would look at different artists. So it might be Paul Klee, for example, in German or do different French, French or Spanish artists. And um, they so perhaps in, in art, they might actually try and recreate something in that style. And in my lessons, what I would do is I got them to do a piece of artwork, um, write some descriptive words around it. So to use their dictionary skills to find words that might help other students describe that picture. Then we put them up around the wall and we held like a kind of art gallery session, like a, uh, an opening exhibition uh, where they talked about and we had it entirely in target language because we've been practicing sort of you know feedback and, and descriptive language. And they, they really, really enjoyed that. I think we even had um, juice and little plastic cups as if it was, you know, sort of a wine and cheese uh, art gallery opening. So that was a great one. Um, obviously, drama is something that lends itself very well to cross-curricular projects. If you do some kind of um, some drama pieces which use target language or, or are from another um, the target language culture, PE um, doing PE lessons in again, you know, if you can do it in target language, you might need to look up um, the particular sporting terms. If you're if you're not a sport fan, like I'm certainly not, and that might require a little bit of research. But if you can actually do a joint team teaching se um, session, that could be great. Um, or it could be using a sport from that culture. So um, we got ours out on the lawn playing petanque, which is really nice. Um, so really nice cultural things. Um, there was also some other um, subjects you could do cross curricular projects with, which my um, colleague Elaine will talk about shortly. But I'll just finish this section. Um, planning an imaginary trip. Um, this was a really nice one with I used to do with a group who were doing holidays as their topic before that. We would plan a trip and I would get them using the computers, looking up um, you know, things on booking.com, looking up flights, looking up um, websites um, from their country. So um, of things they might want to do. So looking up, you know, in Euro Disney, looking up uh, football, how to get football tickets for you know, Bayern Munich or wherever. Um, and they we, they would have a, a budget and they, they had to decide in their groups where they were going to go, how they were going to get there and really think about it. it it's so um, cross curricular because it involves obviously the maths of working at the budget and so on. And they very quickly find out, no, we can't stay in the Ritz and we can't have a place with a hot tub in our budget. Um, looking at geography. So, um, you know, they quickly find out, no, we can't go to Berlin and see Bayern Munich at home in the same weekend. That doesn't work either realizing actually how big Germany is, for example. Um, and they, they really actually lots of life skills of how do you look for a hotel room and really putting these things into context. So realizing this is this is a real language, looking at sites in the target language. Um, and then they would present it afterwards using the future tense to say where they were going to go, what they were going to do and so on. Um, you could also make a scrapbook with pictures um, describing a, a past imaginary trip, for example, um, or they could um, put their future plans in a kind of scrapbook, which could be digital um, on something like a Miro board or something. 
or it could be a physical one that they can make. So these are really, really nice projects, really motivating, but also using mo um, real meaningful learning as well. I'm aware I'm really speeding through this because we have so much to get through, but hopefully these ideas will be useful. And please do let us know as we go anything in particular you think you might like to use. Um, another nice project is making board games. Um, and so this could be different types of board games. I mean, Trivial Pursuit is a, is a classic one um, where it could be revising different topics and they make you know little question cards um, so that means they really go back through their books and look at all the useful language they've learnt. Um, or it could be categories. So I'm, I remember one group they were making, you know, one was like a grammatical question and one was a vocab and one was um, a translation and so on. So you can make all different kinds. And it's amazing how creative they can get while also kind of it's almost hidden learning because they are they're going through and, and revising and then of course they can play each other's board games as well so not only did they get um, the practice of making the questions and of course we know that often uh, testing someone else or teaching someone else is a really good way to actually consolidate your own learning but then they play everyone else's games and practice that as well so that's that can be really really nice um, fashion show. So if you're doing clothes, um, uh, I used to do this with my year, eight, year eights because we had the topic of clothes in the summer term. So they would be in groups and they would uh, plan together. So what the outfit one of them was going to wear, all, all involving things that they you know had at home. And they would write a description of it, uh, plan it all. And then we would have, uh, I got the drama studio, we had the fashion show. They would be walking up and down the catwalk while the others had the microphones and saying, you know, um, what they were describing, what they were wearing in, in, in the target language. And then the other people, the, all, the rest of the audience would, would give uh, target language feedback as well. You know, oh, je pense que c'est très beau or whatever. Um, and it's really nice. It's just a really nice atmosphere. And it was a lovely um, way. It's sort of a culmination of, of that topic and putting it into context. So that is one that was, that's, that's really, really nice. Oh. Sorry, I don't know what's going this way. <laughs> okay, and now I'm going to pass over to uh, my colleague Elaine. Oh, sorry. Let's see, it's going mad. So she's going to talk about some projects uh, that she's got. Shows that this is live, definitely. <laughs> okay, so um, as Zoe said, you know, we're trying to whiz through this. The, the Cluedo and the Movie Maker, I've got um, some uh, templates for you to use those if you don't know what they are, but they're Guess Who is a game which um, certainly my daughter played when she was younger. Um, and Movie Maker is a game that's very old, but it's a quite a really interesting game for students who are interested in, in, in sort of acquiring movie stars and different film sets and things. It's quite fun, is that? Um, so we look quickly at Monopoly, um, then looking at a series of mini projects which could have with or without a theme in mind, and then a complete module of work with a theme. And can I just say before we move on that uh, most of these resources are what Zoe and I have made, and some of them aren't, and some of them are from colleagues that I've worked with in the past, all of whom I've um, you know, spoken to and said, is it okay for me to use these? And there may be one or two on here, which I'm not sure where I originally got them from, but um, I will acknowledge them um, that they are from someone out there. So they are not my, some of these are not my actual physical resources, although I have used them in the classroom. Um, Okay, Zoe, so if we move on to the next slide then, <clears throat> we can see that we've got here, um, back one Zoe please. Right, so we've got here our Drama Techniques in Language Learning. That's a book which I think is out of print now, but I think you can source that on, on eBay um, for a very cheap amount. Um, and I can, again, I can give you some tips from that if you wanted to email me uh, from that book. That's something I've, I've used for a very long time in my teaching. Learned a lot from it in the very early days, in the late 80s, early 90s. Um, the Peanuts cartoon there, again, is one some, something that I've done with English link to link it with English is to um, produce a cartoon and to actually get the students to write their own question bubbles or uh, conversation bubbles there. They could even draw their own cartoon and make their own up, draw the cartoon, swap it with a friend in the classroom and they have to write the bubbles and give it them back, translate it. You can do it into the other language. You can do all sorts of things without even acting out. Um, on the right hand side there I've got some pictures from some trips I've done in the past. Again, if your students have got any holiday photographs they could bring in, you could even ask them to write a, um, a description as you would on the photocard, which is in the current GCSE, and then actually use that as a model 
um, and say, right, um, you know, let's have a look at this together class. Let's have a look where we would grade it. Obviously, you would need to get your students to buy into that, to understand that, that their work was going to be looked by looked at by everyone else and graded. Um, or you could just um, make them, ask them to do it and then just give it back as a feedback and then maybe use it for next year. So when you're actually teaching the same year group again with the same a piece of work you could actually say this is a pot from a student remove the name off it and you could use that as a live piece of work that is actually not non-threatening to that class that you're teaching um, I've done that in the past and that's always been really useful and um, again um, you've got um, an example here on the left hand side of my students that have made um, cards for reading these these have had for a very long time but again you could use these in class you could ask them to make their own reading cards based on a particular topic that they feel that they need some revision with or something that they may have a gap in their learning or you could actually give them those to do and let them self mark them and then as Zoe said previously um, linking back to some of the other projects in a moment this is a topic where one of my students I think I've shown this slide in previous training one of my students drew a very beautiful picture of herself and then annotated it with all the words um, and that was a top that could be a topic that maybe you've not covered yet or one that you feel your students have not actually engaged with over um, the last 18 months or the last year to be able to just make it a little bit of fun to try and uh, link hook their learning in okay so if you could move forward a little bit please with the next one and here we've got the the balancing clowns and butterflies again these have appeared a few, a few times um, but these again are quite fun activities it's a link with science and you can get them to design them with the templates that um, you can get and then you can write the words on the back and make a display you can do your words in French German Spanish whatever language you teach and you could have a, a kind of like um, a string of them across the classroom just to take some photographs then obviously take the spring the string down because it's a hazard could set the alarm off if you leave it up but i certainly have had some real good fun with those and students wondering sort of even if you can't wander around the classroom sitting there with them balancing on their nose they've absolutely loved it and um, again um one project that we've done in the past with technologies we've actually um made some famous buildings um and here's the eiffel tower um which again a student made at home and you could then um maybe do a role play around that and get them to annotate that along around it with little speech bubbles or bits of um post-its and put little bubble um, conversation bits on it or it could just be a descriptive bit or it could be just stuck on with blue tack anything around that or it could just be there in the middle of the table where the students have to pretend and, and be a little bit creative and make a um you know how do i buy a ticket for the eiffel tower or whatever building it is that you've got i've been to the eiffel tower this is what i've seen you could even combine it with um, a possible virtual 360 tour that you can find on youtube which lots of students who've never been abroad and will never get the chance to go um, for various reasons you can actually immerse them in the buildings that they have created and again if you made a little town of paris you choose whatever city you want in france germany spain or whatever language you're teaching and allocate the different buildings to different groups to make them out of anything you can find i've seen students make them out of paper cups they've made them out of plasticine they've even made them out of just bits of card and just cut them up and made them as they go but they've had some certain fun with it and then on the right hand side we've got um, something i used uh, a lot last over the last few years with um, getting some very cheap t-shirts and they've just written on them all sorts of dialogues or any kind of words that you feel you um, want to practice with the students it's been very good for learning and revision when there have been exams but also um, it could be linked to shopping and shopping dialogues and then just to the bottom of that here we have um, another sort of link to uh, art where the students have got some backing paper that you would normally put on your wall students lay down on it they've drawn around it and then they've labeled it with different verbs or different parts of the body and one other thing that i did do when i was working in a very challenging school um was we um we got a load of fabric and we actually um, made some stuffed animals the, the boys in particular love stuffing the animals and then they sewed what they they actually with with thread they sewed words on them in the different target languages and that was really powerful okay moving on zoe really quickly this is the monopoly that I spoke about. Again, this is a good project where you can um, ask them to do some research either at home and get them to actually fill in the grid. That's just a generic one in Spanish, that one. And then the next one, I think, is the next slide, Zoe, is in French. And then in the next slide is in 
German. And um, if you want to do this, I've used this a few times in training, maybe two or three now. I've got the full set of instructions on how you play this game once you've actually made it. OK. OK, moving on, Zoe. I'm swiftly moving. Right. Some of the mini projects that are maybe not linked here, you could get them to do an Insta Instagram project. And down the side here, you can see the kind of things that they might put in it. And then here you might decide to um, show the success criteria with them. You may well use this based upon um, whatever de de you decide down the, the five that I've chosen there. You could link them to uh, the exam criteria and you could actually um, get them to grade each other's or even grade their own and do a little bit of peer and self-assessment. And then on the right hand side there, we did um, an actual hands and feet project where the students drew around their own hands and their feet and they actually then um, made dialogues and put them uh, on the wall. And they just enjoyed that. It's just something a little bit different to do. OK, and then again on the next slide, Zoe, Moving on, we've got our mini projects here, which start off with the masks, which you can see here, where we have two masks, um, easy to do with the paper plate. You put a face on it, put a piece of sellotape or blue tack with a pen or a pencil or a lollipop stick, turn it over, write a dialogue and actually get the students to have that in front of them while you actually film them or they just have a dialogue. They do it on audio, whichever way you feel comfortable and your students are happy to do. It's just a fun way of getting some speaking done. Uh, and again, there's a couple of masks there at the bottom. Those are actually ones that have been bought. But again, you can write on the back of them. Uh, a time capsule is something which I believe is in one of the textbooks where you can actually imagine that in fifth, I don't know, in five years time when your class are in year seven, they're going to open that capsule in year 11 and you could have it somewhere in school, even in a locked cupboard. And they just all put little letters in there or put things that are, um, they want to describe or may, maybe um, an experience that they've had in, in the target language, little sort of mementos, push it into there, keep it locked up, say, for five years. And then when they open it, uh, when they're in year 11, that's a really exciting experience for them to see it because they can remember, remind themselves back to what they did in year seven and what their writing was like and what they could actually do. OK, another thing I've done is clocks where the students again um, make a clock. And again, the basis for that I've always used um, with the most simplest idea of a paper plate. And they've actually made their own hands. They've made their own. You just get some twist pins, put them through so that the hands actually rotate and they can then decorate it with the numbers. And um, it just helps students who are a little bit less confident with selling the time. And you'd be surprised at how much that does improve them because they can then go around telling the time they could do you, you know you can build all sorts of activities on that um, swapping the times with each other and um, you could even get them to have a time on the back in case they are a little bit less uh, confident with reading the time but then swap it over with their friends but then they have a proper clock that allows them to tell the time um, pebble stones again has been around for quite a while it was a really big thing that was done for european languages of the week last year or the year before where you get some pebbles and the students decorate them with words or their own sort of things that they want to in the target language and then um, they could even be put outside the school to make a display afterwards uh, town a maps and a conversation again is something I've done before it's a nice little project you could start off by teaching your students buildings in a town or revising them and then you could actually get them to design a map talk about where these buildings might be you can bring a bit of cross curricular in there with geography you can talk about you know what are the most important buildings uh, label a map draw that make it a big map if you want so students do sections of it or you and put it on your wall as display or you could make a small map and then you could start to introduce directions and actually make some little people that move around the map and they have to ask how to get somewhere proper conversation turn left turn right go down the second street on the left and that is quite a powerful little sort of thing to make okay on to the next one Zoe <clears throat> which I think is the leaves and sticks this was one I did in lockdown to um, enable students who had been sick of sitting in front of a computer we went outside I said to them right you've got an hour off now from languages go and find loads of leaves and sticks and make some words or some verbs I'd give them a verb and then they would take a photograph if that was possible and send that to me to look at or you could just get them to bring a load of leaves and sticks into school and make that as a project on the table that's just a little bit different if it would work for you um, pencil cases we all still obsess 
obsessed with um, and there is every reason to be obsessed because it's obviously one of the things that we have to teach at this moment in time with pencil case and items in there. One of the things I do in year seven is I get them to actually make a pencil case and I'll say to them, you, you know, use whatever you've got at home, come up with a pencil case. If you don't want to make it, draw it. If you don't want to do that, just make the labels for it. And they would then bring them in and we would judge the, the, the most creative or maybe the most improved or maybe the, 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 the you know, some sort of criteria that we would use for that for the making pencil cases. The next one, Zoe, is making the game slide. And you can see up there Les Personalités, which is a slide from um, that famous game show that's on at half past 20 past five. The name has just has gone out of me, pointless. That's right. And I just came into my head. So they would make up their own slides for that. And we would have a competition to see who could, um, you know, who could be the one who won. And the last one on there is the school project. And here you've got um, the bottom picture that is a year seven, uh, eight, nine, 10, 11 uh, group activities. Takes a little bit of organising, but it really does raise the profile of languages in the school. And again, if you want any help with that, I've got a document that will take you through how to do it from the beginning to end. And then one more slide, Zoe, I think on this before we move on to the tech. This is something that I was involved in heavily in the in 2005 to 2009, which was um, national vocational qualifications. But these are modules of work that I actually wrote and have resources to back up. So the top left one is a module that would take you that number of weeks and it goes from lesson six through to lesson 16. And it's basically based on how to um, design a product and make a good sales pitch. And then obviously it moves on to getting items in an office, um, which we've got here on the speaking assessment. All assessments are there ready to rock. So again, if anybody wanted to have any of that, you're more than happy to send them out. Again, a little bit more content, a little bit more challenging is the one on the right, the contents of a CV, which again, takes you through interview protocols, what, what to do in an interview and talking about booking tickets uh, for planes and travelling. And then the bottom left is more to do with looking at a company. So working in a company to produce a personal profile. And then the bottom right is very much around uh, similar, something similar to what Zoe said about, you know, talking about holidays. But this one's about booking a holiday and so on. OK, let's do that as quick as I can. So Zoe, move on yep. to using tech. Great, thanks very much, Elaine. Um, yeah, so the so our next section, as Elaine says, is about different ways that you can use technology to in, um, yeah make really motivating lessons or projects that you could do. Um, one is using Google Street View, um, doing treasure hunts on that. Um, so you can see an example I've got here in Berlin, um, and I've also seen one. Well, I used one for, for an Eiffel Tower, which I, I saw the idea and, and adapted that as well. Um, so you get students to. Uh, log on if you know if you've got a computer room or iPads or whatever and um, they go there and you give them a starting point and then you can give them some different uh, questions and give them directions in the target language and um, they have to answer those and they sort of move through um, you know move the little person through um, and it's a really nice way of rev both revising um, town vocabulary directions and so on but also getting a bit of cultural capital as well um because they really get to see these things and they really like it and then um i think in berlin they ended up at the brandenburg tour in france they ended up in the eiffel tower and so on um and that's yeah that's really nice especially if you have got um these uh where trips have been cancelled so they can't go and see these places for themselves or if you're in a school where it's unlikely that the students would be able to afford to travel and go and see these places um, another thing you can do with technology is um, escape rooms have become really, really popular. So loads of them on Genially. There are so many um, I've seen with teachers sharing them. I know that Esmeralda Salgado, who we had on here a few weeks ago, um, has got loads of them and she's been sharing those. There are some fantastic ones available. So do go have a look on the various Facebook groups and so on. They can be really nice. Um, Real-time online competitions, obviously there are diff loads of different websites you can use, lots of people have been using Kahoot and Quizlet Live and so on. And as you can see at the bottom, really excited that um, LanguageNet is, uh, we're launching our own version very, very soon, LanguageNet Live. And um, on this one, you will be able to use all of our vocabulary games of the different skills. And the students can compete in real time against each other and they can see where they are in the league table. Um, you can you can sort of the teacher can line up various various different um, activities one after the other and you can uh, yeah try and improve and so on. And it's that's really fun. We've been testing that a lot at Language Not Headquarters. So um, that's coming up very soon. It's been very exciting. Um, another thing you can do is making a podcast or a film.
uh, back in the olden days, I, I did it with a radio show, um, which which could maybe be updated to be a podcast now. Um, so what that what that involved was actually a real summary of everything that we had learnt in the previous uh, year. So we in groups they made a, a weather report. Um, they did an interview, they did um, a film review and so on. So all lots of things that might be in a, in a radio show or a podcast. Um, they, rec they wrote them, they recorded them, edited them together and then we listened to them all. So this is really nice. It's, it gets them using productive skills and receptive skills as well. Um, and they really, really enjoyed it. And making films as well. So um, uh, with one group, we were doing the school topic around that time. So they filmed a tour of the school. Um, they went around and again, did, you know, they recorded, they learnt their lines, they recorded themselves speaking it. There were other ones who didn't want to film themselves. So they took photos, made a slideshow, but did uh, then a voiceover which is really, really nice and just really getting them to use that um, that language in context. Um, another one we were doing with the and I, we were, do, we were using Export 3 at, the, at that time. And there's a chapter on Crime au Chateau, which is a, um, it was a murder mystery. And then after we had done that unit, they then uh, made their own, they wrote their own murder mysteries, obviously very scaffolded. And then they filmed them as well. Um, and edit them together. It's amazing, obviously, the, the skills that lots of young people have in terms of editing good videos and everything, um, which is, again, really nice for their cross-curricular stuff with computing. And they then afterwards, what was really nice is we watched them all and then we had an Oscars ceremony as well. And, uh, you know, we voted for, you know, best pronunciation, um, best use of, you know, varied language. Also, of course, best acting and best uh, editing and so on. Um, and that was just, yeah, really, really nice. Uh, project which was you know lots of people found very motivating uh, silent film dubbing is for silent film dubbing is a project that I really like doing and um, this involves using any kind of video which could be could be a scene um, that is, this is really good for role plays so it might be in a, in a cafe or in a shop or something if you're doing those kind of dialogues and you play it with the sound off so it doesn't matter what the actual original language is or what happens or well, um, or yeah uh, what they say and the students write their own voiceovers for it and you can either do it where you play it up on the screen and then they, they do it live uh, just reading out from their books or you can do it that they can film themselves and then edit it over the top it's really easy to do in, in movie maker for example or actually lots of various phone apps if, if you're using phones in school um, and I think my favorite one was actually uh, with one group this is when I was a student teacher we were doing illnesses and sort of visit to the doctors and I wrote my poor housemates into filming <laughs> uh, a, a scene at the doctors they were a series of patients I borrowed a white coat from science from the science lab and I was a doctor and then they came in you know one person had clearly hurt their arm one person had a headache and uh, one person came and he had water in his mouth and he pretended to throw up everywhere which yeah a bit gross but oh, year eight's really like that stuff um and then the they and obviously i was the doctor and prescribing you know these these sort of big flash cars with you know tablets and medicine and so on and then they did the the voiceover for that and they they really enjoyed uh yeah you know trying to to dub you know me with speaking french and so on and yeah and also trying to work out who all the people were in it as well. Um, so that was a really, really fun project. Um, and the last one on this one is, is karaoke. Uh, so my last school, it was a kind of bit of a, a famous thing. It was known that my year 11s on their last lesson after their last, well, the, on the lesson after their last assessment before they went off for exams, we would do karaoke um, as their kind of reward to sort of let up a bit of steam. And we so we would do you know German or French karaoke, um, and they would translate uh, songs they wanted to learn they wanted to do into the target language, which is good fun. Um, if you do German, there's a YouTuber called Alexi Bexi who does uh, he's a load of videos called Songs auf Deutsch, where he has done that. Um, he's got a terrible voice, but um, it's it's really fun. They they really enjoy hearing these songs in German. And yeah, they would just have a good old sing song, but you know, in German as well. Um, that was a really, really nice way to kind of send them off um, for study leave. So even without study leave, there's no reason why you couldn't do something like that. And I'm gonna pass over to Elaine now to talk about uh, a few other projects. Uh, you're muted, Elaine, sorry. Thank you, sorry. sorry. 
I was just trying to cut down the amount of uh, feedback. Um, there is a French version of Alex, Alexi Bexi is Sara, S-A-R-A apostrophe H. And she is very good again at um, speaking, uh, singing French songs, which are actually popular ones that you would see in English, but doing them in French. Um, so some things I've done, a couple of things here. I've done, as I mentioned earlier, a 360 virtual tour of somewhere like the Eiffel Tower. And you'd be, su you'd be surprised at how much the children sort of, they actually love it when you, there's one if you look on youtube it actually goes up where you go up in the uh, lift and come down on the steps um and then you actually uh, see one where you actually get up to the top and learn all the views and it's really really interesting for students who are never going to get across to that kind of area due to various reasons and obviously now um and you know we can't travel at the moment there's something else to, to bear in mind um making an audiobook is something else um that i've done a few times um and again the students can make this you don't have to worry about them being on screen they can just record it and they could do it at home do it in school whatever is appropriate and you could then use that in whatever way you see fit either sending it to a partner school or using it with another class okay so we're moving on to rewards great thank you i would just Move over here. So, um, yeah, and uh, just looking at the questions as well. So, um, with all of these, what I would say the best thing is um, we are we're really happy to, to share our resources. Um, like most members of the MFL community, we, we we love to share our resources. We don't want people to reinvent the wheel. Um, so, the easiest thing is if you could email us. We'll put our email addresses um, at the end of this. And um, but although it's also Zoe or Elaine at languagenet.com, please email us. Let us know what you'd like, and we're happy to send that out. We'll uh, we'll, we'll look at our emails first thing in the morning and and send those out so please do let us know that because uh, if you put it in the chat we won't be able to keep track of who wants what and how to contact <laughs> you, so that's the best way to do it so the next section yet is on is on rewards um obviously generally praise and rewards are a very effective way of um, motivating classes anyway but particularly at this time um and uh whole school or whole year competitions can be a really nice way of doing that so um we know there are loads of schools for example who use language nuts who um have ongoing weekly competitions um language nut legends for example or language nutter of the week and so on um which is really nice so whoever's got the most points in the league table um gets a shout out on twitter potentially a prize as well i know there was uh one school that even had it whoever had the most points by the end of the half term um got to throw wet sponges at uh their, the, the staff members which uh, looked quite fun i'm um, not sure i would have signed up for that myself but good <laughs> on them for doing that um but you could do that with house points or whatever it is you know that you do um there are yeah different uh activities you could do as well um we're hoping to do something where we can um do some careers interviews with uh, uh meeting at meeting our developers and meeting our team um also very sort of particular themed competitions so um spelling bees uh something that we've we've done which is really nice for practicing um the uh, alphabet in the target language as well as well as the vocabulary um so we uh we did that with year sevens at my previous school that was that was really nice um bake offs is another one so um this could be a whole school thing and it could be a language themed Bake off. Um, also related to that is uh, I remember doing a top the topic of the house. It was it wasn't a competition, but we, um, when we're doing house and home um, in year seven, uh, I got students. Their homework was to do an, a plan of their or a house in whatever format they wanted to, and the more creative, the better. And I would give give points for that. And so lots of people drew them, but I had you know people brought in models made with Lego. I had screenshots from Minecraft where I mean someone had absolutely meticulously recreated their entire house in Minecraft. Um, and uh, I used to drop hints that my favourite uh, way of this would be to bake it in cake. And every year, without <laughs> fail, I would get two or three bakers um, who would have you know either made it and then iced out their plan, or someone actually made a model thing in cake so um any way in which you can get more cake into school is a good thing in my book um house points raffle is another thing i have mentioned in the past um so this can be a really motivating thing where you uh, whenever they get a house point or a merit or whatever reward system that you have um i would have it on a piece of paper and i would put it in to a pot a little ice cream tubs for each uh class that i had and then at the end of the half term or the term i would draw one out and they would get a prize usually some chocolate or something and obviously the more house points or merits that they got then the more likely they were to have their name pulled out um so that was a real really nice reward um and sort of incentive to uh to try to yeah contribute in class in order to get their house points 
Um, clearing up time music or video clips. So um, something I did with some of my older students was um, uh, just before the end of the lesson, I would pick a student who I thought had made a really nice contribution that lesson. And I would ask them, they got to pick a song. And obviously, it has to be something that's that is vaguely appropriate for school anyway but they would pick a song and i would play that on youtube while they would while they were clearing up and getting ready for the end of the lesson so that was um a really nice thing or alternatively i might do it perhaps more with video clips where i said right we're going to tidy up and as soon as everybody is you know standing behind their desks with the chairs tucked under or on the top or whatever depending on what time of day it was um uh for the length of time between you all being ready to leave and the bell going um, I will play a video clip which might be um, might be something in target language or it might be frankly cute video cute animal clips or something baby goats do love a good baby goat video um, so obviously the quicker they got tidied up and ready to go then the quicker or the longer they will be able to watch a video for because then obviously the bell would go um, and a couple of target language ones which are quite nice for German there's a really good one the Rhabarber Barbara one um, is is good fun with uh, looking at German compound nouns and how wonderfully insane they are and beautiful. Um, so that's a really nice story of, yeah, somebody called Barbara who makes rhubarb. Um, and there's another series of uh, ones for French called Avez-vous déjà vu? Um, really silly and, yeah, a little bit cheesy, but they they, they really like them. Um, they just It's just some strange, surreal idea, and then they would take it to its logical conclusion. So um, they, they're worth checking out. I would recommend those. And the last thing is on, again, on, on music using background music. So um, I, if the students are doing something where they're just kind of getting on with it, doing some quite independent work, writing or something, um, I would put some background music on either, either playlist uh, for French and German, or you could use the radio station NRG. It's very good for French and by André, it's quite good for German um, because they play a mix of modern English music plus also French and German music so um, they really like that. I would play it at quite a quiet volume and if anybody if they were talking too loudly then they wouldn't be able to hear it I would refuse to turn the volume up so this is a way of just getting them really nicely quietly just um, working with that on in the background. Oh, I realize we're getting quite close in the time so I'm going to move on to, uh, on to Elaine to talk yeah, about yeah. the next ones. This is quick. So, um, step towards pyramid. I've mentioned this before, where you start off with a small reward, whether that's just touching your student on there, just saying well done in class, just touching them like that. If you feel you can do that, you know, well done. Um, and then it moves up like kind of like a pyramid does to more and more sort of um, bigger rewards. Again, I've got a document for that just to sort of help you really, because some people go in at a different, you know, they suddenly they think this child's doing really well, I'm going to send a letter home. That's kind of about the ninth step on my reward pyramid. Um, and it does help to sort of have it staggered, you know, have it start small and, and move on big towards the bigger uh, prizes or bigger rewards or whatever you want to use in your school. And then obviously one, if you can, again, it's very much difficult. It's very difficult at the moment. But if you can bring the local primary to you or you go to them with key students and you could get your students involved in writing a module of work that you want to deliver to them or something um, and, and just get key students, whoever those key students are, whether it's students that you're wanting to uh, empower to do a language next year uh, or students who are a little bit more tricky or just students that you want to reward for great work or behaviour or attitude or whatever or a mixture and get them involved with that if that is possible. I was used to take every other, every week when I used to go out to primary to teach uh, which is what I did a few years in my in my job um, I used to select a couple of students to take with me obviously um, there's things around risk assessments and traveling in your car and sorts of things like that but if you if you want to do that you will make it work and find a way to do that okay so we've got about 16 minutes left and we've got two sections to go so move on to culture <laughs> yep great thank you so um, yeah uh, obviously, this is a really, really great time in order to do um, cultural aspects rather than um, f focus on linguistic sides um, because, yeah, it's a really nice motivating thing. Um, films obviously are great. So you can do a project that might last um, a few weeks, actually, um, and do different aspects of it. So um, we used to do uh, Les Corrises with Year 9. And uh, we had a sort of a work, a pack of work to go through with different things, looking at the vocab and but also some creative things. Um, and I also remember I had a really difficult, really challenging year nine class, um, and they loved the film. And I actually, as a kind of reward, because they were working so well on it, I um, I taught them one of the songs from it, Voix sur ton chemin. I taught them a little harmony to go with it. Um, 
as music is one of my hobbies and um i had this whole class which i'd had loads of problems with in the year but um we ended up got the whole class singing the song in harmony and it was really beautiful and it, 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 because of the, the film as well it just really uh resonated it felt really beautiful i really felt like like uh like matthias so that was uh, i think i ended up in tears at the end of that lesson uh because it was so beautiful and there are loads of great films out there are some suggestions here but also on facebook groups you can find loads of really good ones um Food tasting could be a nice one. Um, so if you've got, uh, for example, for German, uh, well, actually in, in Spanish they do as well, like an Aldi or a Lidl, um, you can get food in perhaps for a small contribution if that's possible with the students. Um, and so you can see there's a photo, that's that's my classroom when we did a French tasting experience. You know, I got loads of you know, croissant and, and various uh, brie and lots of different things. And they tried that. Um, which is really nice and uh, also I could be a little uh, like a kind of waiter and they obviously had to tell me what they wanted in, in French. Um, uh, there's also a picture of me, this is uh, in my dental, so um, that was what I did for, for a German one as well. Um, during our European Week of Languages I used to dress up in a different uh, sort of culture's costume uh, for each day. I was, love a bit of dressing up, that was always good. Um, but also there are many restaurants who um, I've seen on adverts on Facebook where they do restaurant experiences uh, where you go in and this, you can take students there and or some of them even come to your school and they, they bring food and you have to order in in the target language and in one school i worked at there was a uh a spanish restaurant nearby it's a family-run spanish restaurant all the st wait staff were spanish as well and this and the spanish teachers just arranged with them that we're going to go um on a sort of school trip but it's it was literally over the lunch period and the spanish lesson which was after lunch so it was in school time didn't actually have to they didn't really have to take them out of school too much um and they just said look we're going to come here um we're going to you know set them a, a budget of what they can uh, they can spend there you know based on the contributions and can you please refuse to understand or speak any english while we're there and that was a really nice low key low prep low budget um spanish restaurant experience that's really really nice so if that's something that you could do that'd be great looking at songs this is a really really good time to use music um so uh check Facebook and so on also use uh, foreign language assistance if you have any to get more up-to-date uh, music but actually older ones can work as well as long as you acknowledge yeah this is old it's a bit cheesy but it's great um, so Black M is often very popular Stormy as well in French um, Joe Dessa I know he's ancient and really really naff but actually linguistically his songs are so good for practicing um, tenses because he loved to write songs which all use the future uh, the future sample or all uh, you know songs that in entirely use the the imparfait so that can be really handy again as i said if you just say yeah i know it's really enough but hey we'll listen to a song it's all good um they can like that wise guys i can definitely recommend for german they've got loads of really funny um songs uh, with different themes there's a great one called mein handy um which is really great for doing technology for example so you, you can do listening activities, you can do fill the gaps um, and you can discuss you know, some of the themes that come up in it. And that can be really, really motivating. And if they fancy it, they can sing along as well, which is obviously really nice for a little bit of um, phonics and pronunciation practice. Um, and Elaine, I'm going to pass back to you. Yeah, thank you. I mean, one of the things we did in lockdown was we actually asked a, um, a restaurant, a French restaurant, to come to the school and they did a pop-up restaurant and they were absolutely desperate for that because they could um, bring the restaurant to the school uh, and so we said if you build it into the day and we obviously they charged us for it a very low rate but it meant that they were able to get some money for um you know doing a service and um, the pink thing there from british council is where you can just go on to the british council connecting classrooms um through global learning and you can adopt a class project with another school you can even have um, a kind of like um link with them that you can do a link uh, set up a live link with that class um, at a convenient time to you both and actually have that experience um, with another school in another part of the world um, and then obviously building and labelling landmarks again there is something uh, for culture there um, which you could maybe do out of card, plasticine, whatever you fancy okay moving on Zoe um, film projects are quite tricky to uh, go back to the last night. This is the um, linked teaching uh, media studies, but it's really good. If you go onto their website, you get lots of ideas. And these are just some of the things that I've done with films uh, where I've done red, amber, green, um, where they've all differentiated tasks based on the film still or whatever. And then we move on to the next one. I'll talk you through really quickly. And I'm 
might not get through all this, but in fact, I'll tell you what I will do. If anybody wants to know how to start teaching a film from the beginning to end, it's a mini email and I'll type this up and give you the actual document because it, it takes it through. But I, I'm conscious of the time um, because you, you know, chucking a film at a class, you've really got to think about it. So there are kind of about 13 steps I go through and it takes me quite a while. And every single one has got some outcome to it. And the students really enjoy it. Uh, and it means you get a lot out of a film, um, whichever film you decide to do. OK, so we'll move on to that one, Zoe, rather than spending time on that. And we'll move on to the, the last section, which I think is lesson techniques, isn't it? And that's where you pick that one up, I think. That's right. Thank you, Elaine. Yeah, so many, so many things here. So yeah, please email us and let us know what it is you'd like. Yeah. Um, so last one is, is on just general techniques for the lesson. So um, one thing you can do, particularly if you've got a, ch uh, a class which is quite challenging and has got lots of low level chatter where you're having to stop and wait. And it's really hard to get the instructions out. We've all been there. Um, so what I did was that, that as I made workbooks or packs which are um, designed to be completed over a few lessons, um, with sort of independent work and I said right okay you have to get this work done by the you know, end of whatever four lessons or something and um, I don't really care how you do it as long as it's done by the end of it um, so you know some of them you know, they, they work through steadily they work through and they, they choose which order they did it in I often had uh, speaking tasks in there as well so I said you know obviously let me know when you need to do your speaking one and I'll come and do that with you um, I had mp3 players to do the listenings whenever they were ready and then obviously some reading and writing tasks which they could do um, and I said even if actually if you talk for the entire lesson and do the whole thing well obviously you can't do all of it because of listening and speaking but if you talk for these lessons and then you do um, most of it for homework or you do it all in the last lesson fine that's up to you learn time management but actually it really meant that the students that wanted to get on with it could just get on with it and um, it gave them ownership and it really helped with um, those behavioral issues so that I can really recommend for um, those really challenging classes where you feel like we're not getting anything done um, that was that can be really helpful um, kind of similar but maybe a bit less extreme as a pick and mix tasks um, so you say right you have to get this number of points um, here on the board or a list of different tasks you can do which are worth different types of points and but, uh, by the end of this lesson you need to have gained these number of points um, so that has a bit of differentiation in there as well and obviously you can have a bit of a challenge for how many points can you get in the whole thing and maybe give points if they get over a certain number which is beyond the minimum that can be really nice um, sentence auctions so uh, you can see here we've got um, uh, there's a sort of Excel slide and I'm happy to share this um, with you this is a, um, uh, a really nice Excel for sheet I've got which has got all the formulae in it so um, you give them a list of sentences and uh, some have uh, correct some have mistakes in them based on the theme and the language that you've been studying recently um, in their teams they have to decide which ones they think are worth bidding on um, because they will only get points if they win a sentence which is correct and has no mistakes in it so they're really looking for these things it's really great for practicing grammar points um, and then we would have an auction and I gave them uh, you know virtual 100 euros or something virtually and I would do the the auction so uh, you know really quickly um, you know going through the numbers and so on like it like an auctioneer which is which is great they really enjoyed that really good for practicing numbers as well um, and this this thing would then count how many euros they had left and so on and uh, so they obviously then just make sure that they don't bid, bid too much on the first sentence um, then we would go through find which sentences are correct and which are not they'd only get points for the ones they did they could also get penalty point uh, bo bonus points for telling me what the mistakes were once we corrected them uh, the penalty points was generally for, for behavior or whatever um, and then there'll be the correct sent yeah the the winner at the end it was a really nice one also using play money is um i would give them a sheet to work with on independent translation activities um in their teams um or it could be other you know uh, comprehensions or whatever um they had a certain amount of, of monopoly money I actually made my own version which had a picture of me with a crown on it which is quite fun uh, but you can just use my own monopoly money I had too much time on my hands as a student teacher I made a lot of resources I kept um, and 
and, I, and then I put a price list on the board and said, you know, well, it's going to cost you five euros um, if you want to come, if you want me to, you know, give you a hint on something and 10 euros if you want me to translate something and and so on for different um, help. Uh, and th that they really liked that. And then it was the, the winner at the end was the ones who got the most answers correct. And then the tiebreaker was how much money they had left and even had some really enterprising uh, characters who then under undercut me and they said, well, Miss is charging 10 euros, but I'll do it for three. Um, and they were going around offering help as well, which is which is really fun. I hadn't expected that to happen. Uh, working more in groups or doing stuff in class. So murder mysteries are great. Um, there's a picture there of the detective. That is my my long suffering husband who played Inspector Ascalgul and did a little film for me, introducing a murder mystery which we did. Um, doing a game, so million pound drop. There's a picture there from from that. Um, where again with play money and they had to sort of they had to put the they have to bet where they think it is and they can either spread their bets a bit or they can bet on one if it's wrong then they lose all the money they put on there um, the haggling game is uh, for shopping so I would give everybody um, or half the class would have uh, some play money and a shopping list and the other half would have little cars which had things that they could sell and the whole thing had to be done in target language obviously very scaffolded we practiced it beforehand and they had to go around and try and uh, buy all the things in their shopping list but also well haggling with some really good for numbers and shopping dialogues um, and the winner at the end was the one who had, uh, well, the, the buyer who managed to get all of their um, but, uh, their things on their shopping list the quickest and with the most money left, and then the shopkeeper who had made the most. And again, you'll always get some Alan Sugars in there who realise that they can then, you know, someone bought up all the T-shirts, I think, in the room and then then sold them because they had the monopoly on it. <laughs> um, so that's really fun. Uh, the last one I want to talk about is get them outside if you can. This is actually the perfect time to do it because there are actually safety reasons for that. So if it's possible to do that, um, get them outside and then actually you can do things that you can't necessarily do in a social distance classroom. If you can get them outside, you could do speed dating activities and so on. Get them moving around. Um, if it's possible to do that, you know, make sure that's right with your SLT. That can be really, really nice and really motivating. Um, I'm just going to pass on to Elena. Yeah, which I'll be really quick with this then. So moving on. Um, so obviously addressing learning gaps due to COVID is something which we're trying to do at the moment. So we'll show you my onesies in a moment. Um, the sentence auction, we've discussed about that, but that again could address any learning gaps you've got. So anything that you feel your students haven't done, teach it as an auction. It's quite fun. Um, if you've never heard of um, inquiry based learning, that's something that's been around for quite a while. It's basically uh, something also known as punk learning, which you can see on the right hand side there. And it's basically asking the kids what they actually want to learn. What do they feel are their gaps in learning? Where do they feel they weren't actually taught enough? Where was the superficial learning taking place um, instead of the in-depth learning? And then to use the punk learning progress chart there, it's actually getting them to assess themselves. So it's a little bit of fun rather than just learning all of the the knowledge it's about how they're working in their attitude as well um, and then obviously something I'm going to quickly go over is the techniques um, delivering projects and workbooks which again for some classes it's a challenge to do that um, and then obviously the last one on there so it is the audit uh, of the personalized key rings which was up at the top there um, where you could actually say right what is the gaps in the learning for the students and they could have a little card in there make each personalized front of their cover and they could then have that as their own sort of personalized journey the learn, learning journey for where they're going to go for the no amount of time that you've got left um, with that. So flip over to the next slide, so if you don't mind. These are all onesies that I worked out when I was working as senior director up until Christmas. We did this about four years ago as a project and basically it's easy, medium and challenge and you've got it in the target language and also in the in English and again it's interchangeable and you've got answer sheets up there and we did it as a project across the trust with my schools for every topic at Key Stage 3 and Key Stage Four. So again, if anybody wants any of those, please let me know and I'll hand them out quite happily. Um, moving on to the next one is the lesson technique. This is avoiding pitfalls with a project. When you're doing a project, you need to think about setting the scene, setting your deadlines, what's your overall purpose, making it real and drip feeding in the phrases and practice it in comfort before letting them loose on producing the language. Because you really need to be able to do, if you're going to chuck your kids in a computer room, um, that can be quite dangerous at times. I always used to book one every week and I'd say to them, right in this lesson we're going to learn something baby steps with the project so we'd learn about where the country is in the bottom left you can see we were doing about Côte d'Ivoire we talk about that then we'd learn how to say that then we'd move into the computer room and then they would be given their, their thing their project 
little bit to do. And they would build that over the, the different topics that I've suggested there. The list is endless, but they would come up with all of those. OK, and then if you move on to the last slide, Zoe, which is this one, this is to do with when you when you're putting groups together, you will always find that your groups, this is really good pedagogy, they will form, they will storm, they'll fall out and say, why am I working with you? Then they will become normal and then they will perform. So in the top right hand corner there, if you've never heard of the six thinking hats, those are the different coloured hats that you might give students in your group. Again, I can explain that or you can research it on the internet if you're interested in doing group work. Challenge cards is something there on pegs. Again, you might have already got these, but you might decide to just put them up in your classroom or have them in boxes and get your students to work through them at their own pace just to try and get them to fill any gaps in learning. And then I think the bottom one, you could even get your students to make those. And this one is talking about a project I did in German where I taught them the animals and you can see there that, that we did the different cases there. Then I taught them um, parts of the body of the animals and then we did the accusative case then we did the le the living environment where they were lived and then they did a verb and then we did a little bit under the challenge cards we did a odd one out so what these animals might have and at the end we came up with the actual description of an animal and then we would use that as a puzzle we might even design it and draw it um, and get the students to swap it over and then they had to draw their um, puzzle that they had or just a bit of fun that just revises us quite a lot of stuff and I think with that, Zoe, we're bang on time, apart from just a minute, and I'm done. <laughs> wow, fantastic. Yeah, that was a real, um, yeah. That was a mammoth one. So loads of information there. So I would recommend uh, watching the video back, you know, if you, um, yeah, to have a look at some things. Please email us. You can see our email addresses there. Plus also my um, colleague, Dan, who, if you're interested in getting um, a trial of language nut, getting some training if you are a subscriber please do contact him please do contact either of us and we're really happy to share our resources with you um, we really hope that you've enjoyed today and the mfl sos series as well uh, please let us know in the chats um yeah what you thought of it any feedback that you have any suggestions you might have for um next for the next uh series of webinars we'll be having in the next academic year um, and I really hope that you've enjoyed it. Anything that you think you might be using. Um, please do register for the MFL Question Time event. Uh, so I have put the link in the chat. Hope you really enjoy that. I'm really looking forward to it. Um, thanks very much. And we will see you again very soon. Thank Goodbye. you.